Think of this as a key, and this as a door. Bring the key close, and the door unlocks. Take the key away, and the door locks. No physical key needs to be inserted or removed. The door automatically detects whether the key is nearby or not. The locking and unlocking happen quietly, without anyone noticing, like a secret key. But how does it actually work? What special tricks or technology make this possible? In this video, we're going behind the scenes to show you exactly how it's done. So let's get started. The trick is made with Reax RYB080i Lite, a compact and a powerful Bluetooth low-energy module. When most people hear the term Bluetooth, they think of wireless speakers or headphones. That's actually Bluetooth Classic, designed for streaming audio. But there's another type of Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE. Instead of music, BLE is built for sending small amounts of data while using very low power. This makes it ideal for devices such as smart watches, health sensors, smart locks, tracking tags, and various IoT devices. When I started thinking about what demo I could make with this module, my first idea was to do an outdoor range test. But I soon realized no matter how far it could reach, it could never beat LoRa. That got me thinking, what would really highlight the strengths of Bluetooth Low Energy? It's not about going kilometers away, it's about proximity and efficiency. Then it hit me, what if I made a secret Bluetooth key, just as I showed you at the beginning of the video? That would perfectly showcase BLE's low power operation and its ability to detect distance through signal strength. So instead of chasing long distances, I'll build a smart BLE-powered key system that unlocks when you get close. All right, now that we have the concept, let's get the circuit ready. Here's a fun fact. When I designed the board for the LoRa tests last time, I also made it compatible with this Bluetooth module. For anyone who didn't see the previous video, I'll quickly explain the circuit and how it works. Basically, the module communicates over UART with AT commands. So we only need two pins, TX and RX. Make sure they are connected correctly. I also included a battery to supply power, a small OLED display to show the status, and a couple of buttons. These buttons can switch modes or trigger actions during the tests, if needed. But for this demo, we won't be using any buttons. For this project, we will focus on the Bluetooth module, the display, and the RGB LEDs to indicate when the door is locked or unlocked. Next up, we move on to the PCB design. After finishing the circuit, the next step was designing the PCB. To make the module easy to install, I added a square hole next to the header pins. This way, it can just slide in, keeping the setup compact. I also placed the battery holder on the back of the PCB to save space. When programming the microcontroller, the dev board connects to a PC and is powered via USB, which provides both 5V and 3.3V from the onboard step-down circuit. To make it a portable as a key, the board can also run on an 18650 battery. In this case, a boost circuit on the PCB raises the battery voltage to 5V to power the microcontroller. Once the PCB arrives, I solder all the components. I actually enjoy soldering, but making two boards does take a bit of time. With both boards ready, it's time to move on to programming. The software is organized in a way that keeps things simple and modular. At first, I had the AT commands to set up the modules directly in the main program. 
but I realize those settings only need to be configured once. They are stored inside of the module and don't need to run every time. So I moved that part into separate files, config transmitter and config receiver. Before running the main receiver or transmitter programs, make sure to run this first to configure the modules. Since there are so many different tasks, like handling the OLED display, controlling the RGB LEDs, and managing the Bluetooth module, I split them into separate files by function to keep things simple. This makes the responsibilities of each file clear, and it's much easier to maintain or update later. By the way, the full source code is available on GitHub, so feel free to check it out if you are interested. Don't hesitate to fork it, open an issue, or send a pull request. Contributions are always welcome. All right, let's walk through how the program actually works. On the receiver side, the door lock, it uses an RSSI threshold to decide whether the door should be locked or unlocked. At a startup, it initializes the OLED display, the RGB LEDs, and the Bluetooth module. By default, the status is locked. Then it clears any existing connections, if there is one, and starts scanning for the target device, Pico key. If a Pico key's signal is detected and stronger than the threshold, the door unlocks. If it's weaker or disappears, the door locks again. The OLED shows the current state in text, while the LEDs change color green for unlocked, red for locked, and purple while scanning. Initially, I plan to connect and read RSSI after the connection, but this module, like many other BLE modules, only provides RSSI while scanning. So the program never connects. It just keeps scanning for Pico key and uses the RSSI from those scan results for distance estimation. On the transmitter side, the key fob, at a startup, it also initializes the OLED display, the RGB LEDs, and the BLE module, just like the receiver. Then it begins advertising so that the receiver can detect it. While advertising, the fob periodically sends beacon signals. The LEDs show a flowing purple meteor animation to indicate advertising. That's all it does. All right, let's see it in action. I start by placing the key far from the door and turning on both devices. After a few seconds, initialization completes and the key starts advertising. On the door side, since the scanned RSSI is below the threshold, the door stays locked. The scanning continues regularly. Now, when I move the key closer, the RSSI of the advertising packet goes about the threshold, and the door switches to unlocked. The scanning keeps running, and if I move the key back and forth a few times, the door toggles between locked and unlocked with a slight delay. And with that, our distance-controlled Bluetooth key is up and running. This is just a simple demo. So of course, there are some insufficiencies and room for improvement. I'd be thrilled if anyone wants to take it further. Feel free to fork the project and experiment with the code. Be aware, this isn't built with strict security in mind. It's just a concept demo. With proper implementation, it could be made much more secure, and you could even add other sensors for extra authentication. And of course, you don't have to use Bluetooth LE at all. Similar proximity-based keys could be built in other ways. I just wanted to share this simple idea. If you have other interesting ways to implement this concept, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. That's for today's video. See you next time.